Hello, I'm Renee Langbart and I am the Clay Center Area Chamber of Commerce Director and I'm so excited today to have a very good friend of mine that I get to have a little chat with. Um, this is Tracy Leitzel and uh, we're going to be talking a little bit about um, a little bit of her background and why they love Clay Center and everything that they're involved with. So I'm super glad to have you, Tracy. Thanks for having me. Yeah. So I, Tracy's a good friend of mine and um, I love her kids, her kids and I. We have a, a nice little history uh, of teasing back and forth, but I confess, um, I don't know much about your past and um, where you came from, um, your background. Um, I've heard rumors that you from a bigger town, is that correct? Mm -hmm. Yep. I grew up in St. Charles, Missouri, which is outside of St. Louis. Okay. Um, lived there until I went to college. Went to college in Kansas City, Missouri at Rockhurst. Okay. Which is where I met my husband, Scott. Okay. And we lived there um, after we got married. We lived there until eight years ago when okay. we moved here. What's your, did you get a degree? Yes, I'm a physical therapist. Oh, so I, I work with that. <laughs> yeah, see, I don't do much of it now, uh -huh. but um, I worked full time for probably seven or eight years as a pediatric physical therapist, working with kids with special needs or developmental delays. And um, when my first daughter was born, then I went part time and okay. worked part time there until until we moved. So, so we what, did, what did Scott do in Kansas City? Scott worked for AT&T. AT&T, mm -hmm. okay, very good. All right. Yes. So you lived in Kansas City for how many years after you were married? Um, we lived there for probably eight years okay. after we were married and we had we had two children in Kansas City, Alexa, okay. Alexa who's 11 now, and Ethan, who's yeah. nine. Uh -huh. And then um, our last one, Brayden, who's seven, I was pregnant with him when we moved here. Okay, very good. So how did you end up from Kansas City? Because a lot of people ask me the same kind of questions. I'm from Georgia, Atlanta. Uh -huh. And I think the most common question that I get um, through the years is, how did you end up in Clay Center? Yes, and, especially because um, I didn't know where Clay Center was. Uh -huh. um, so my husband worked at AT&T. Yes. And um, he had a coworker who also worked at AT&T, okay. who um, their family owns a family business, Twin Valley here. Yeah. And so we knew him um, and they got to talking one day after, after Ben had moved back home and there was a job opening and so Scott said, what would you think about me applying to a job in Clay Center, Kansas? Hmm. And I said, where? <laughs> <laughs> and um, so I learned a little bit about Clay Center and I was terrified because I had never lived in a small town. Uh -huh. um, and to me, Clay Center seemed really small. Yeah. And uh, we came to look at it one day and I remember it was a really dreary, rainy fall day. Everything was brown, all the leaves were on the mm -hmm. trees. And we drove around and we went to Ben's house and talked and then we um, drove home and I just cried <laughs> all the way home. And mm -hmm. I said, if I can quit my job and be a stay at home mom, then we can go. And he was like, are you sure? Um, so that's it. We put our house on the market and we moved here and I was, Terrified, but now we love it. <laughs> uh -huh. um, it's funny you say that because I remember when when I first moved to Clay Center, um, the day that I remember it was dreary. Also, isn't that <laughs> funny? I very vividly remember yeah. the overcast skies and it being kind of cooler. And um, mm -hmm. you know, I had lived in a smaller community though okay. um, before Clay Center, so Clay Center was like. The big <laughs> yeah, it was like high living for me like, because there was a Subway, a Sonic, um, there was Twister at the time and you know it was, we had street lights and you know so that was like oh I'm getting back to city living. It's fantastic. All the reasons why I thought it was small. Right? Yeah, exactly. All we have is something, you know. <laughs> well excellent. Um, that's really great to learn some things about you. I did not know those things. Yeah, we so we're going to take a few second break. And um, when we come back, um, I'd like to hear your thoughts on why you love Clay Center. Because I know why I love Clay Center. So okay. um, we'll be back in a minute. At Eagle Communications, we're proud to provide the communication services you need to get the most from today's technology. 
our employee owners make it happen. We're part of your community, and we take pride in delivering excellent customer service. If you ever have a question, give us a call. We're here to help. Eagle Communications, our community connected. Welcome back. Um, I'm Renee Langbart, the Clay Center Area Chamber of Commerce Director, and I'm here with my friend, Tracy Leitzel. And we've been chatting about how her and her family got here to Clay Center and um, her background a little bit. And um, I'm always excited to hear what other people think about Clay Center, because we're both outsiders. Mm -hmm. um, and I think a lot of times the people that are the most excited about our community are those that are transplants. And um, so tell me a little bit about, you kind of shared with us your first impressions of the community um, that you cried, <laughs> Sorry, um, which I is did. okay, <laughs> it's fine. It's just adjusting to, you know, it's a different pace of life for sure. Um, and I always tell people like once, once you adapt to it, I wouldn't give it up for anything in the world. Exactly, um, I agree. And I keep rubbing it into my family on the East Coast that um, not too long ago, there was a report that came out that Manhattan, which is, you know, just a bedside, we're considered a bedside community of them, that it's, was it the first or the second place, best place in America to live? And I'm like, I am right there. That's so great. that's yes. really what I think. So I think Clay Center is just an amazing place. Um, so after you got done crying <laughs> and uh, you, you realized that this is where um, you were being led. Mm -hmm. um, so once you got here, then how did your perception change? Okay, well, first of all, once, so moving here, there were a few things that really scared me about it. Uh -huh. And that was, well, not having Target down the street, things uh -huh. like that, the conveniences of stores and so yes. many restaurants and all of that. Uh, two, I had the perception that in a small town, everybody probably grew up there and all knew each other and wouldn't care about meeting a new friend. Right. So I was afraid about meeting people, especially being a stay-at-home mom. Yes, exactly. And um, the, I was afraid about the schools because Scott and I grew up both in Catholic schools. That was our plan for our children. Sure. Um, while we have a Catholic church here, we don't have a school. And so I was really nervous mm -hmm. about our first experience with public schools. Um, so <laughs> we got here and um, and there was a little bit of an adjustment period sure. about, you know, going to Starbucks or whatever. Java Junkies wasn't here then. <laughs> <I know. laughs> and so um, anyway, but we adjusted pretty quickly because I decided that I was moving to a new town. I was going to be a stay at home mom and I was not going to just sit around the house and not meet anybody. I was gonna, especially I was pregnant. I was going to have a baby in six months. and I knew then I'd be home a little more. Mm -hmm. So um, there were so many opportunities to go out and meet people. Like we went to church probably two or three days after we moved here. And right away, someone came up to us mm -hmm. and said, I noticed there's a new family at church mm -hmm. and invited us to the breakfast after church. Um, and we met people there and then I looked up online all the different things I might take my kids to do and I saw a parents as teachers play group. Yeah. And so I still had boxes all over my house and I just said, I'm, I'm, didn't, I'm gonna do this. Mm -hmm. And so I went there and same thing, the parents as teacher educator came right up to me and said, oh, I haven't seen you here before. Mm -hmm. And I told her I was new and she introduced me to all kinds of moms that I'm still friends with today. Mm -hmm. um, library story time I mean there's just so many things that if you put yourself out there there's a lot of things to do especially with your small children which is we moved here with small right, children yeah. um, and the people here are just really friendly everyone I, I did not have to worry at all about people already having friends and not wanting a new one <laughs> yeah I agree with you I think that you know sometimes um, us transplants that that is a fear that you think well it's just that same old um, grade school kind of feel like mm -hmm. everybody's already friends and nobody's gonna like me nobody's gonna accept me and that's just not the case that's right and um, we, the, this community is exceptionally kind to one another and friendly and um, you know of course there's people that did grow up here mm -hmm. um, and there's people that still have I'm friendships friends from too. <laughs> yeah from 40 years ago or whatever um, and it, it is remarkable um, to see how people do you just become a, it is such a close knit community. I, I, agree. I agree. And that's one of the things that really has really made us fall in love with Clay Center is mm -hmm. the people, the people that are so friendly. I mean, 
when six months after moving here, we had a baby, and uh -huh. we had meals coming to our house for at least two months straight. Uh -huh. Some people I didn't even, even know, know. Mm -hmm. and they brought us meals. Yeah. And that just really overwhelmed me with their kindness. And same thing, if we need something improved in our community, the zoo, the pool, whatever it is, then everyone just jumps on board and yeah. wants to make it an even better place. I think um, as a whole, our community has accepted um, progress and a vision of keeping our community growing and keeping it well and keeping um, that close-knit community feel. Um, and it does take work. Um, I had said a few years ago, I said, you know, like community takes commitment. And I think that Clay Center really has um, progressed in that department um, that I agree with you that so many people do step up to the plate when there's a need or um, a void or whatever it is. And right. people just, they just do. I and agree. So I'm anxious to hear your thoughts on the school because I, I agree with you. Um, so I grew up in private schools my whole life until I was in the 10th grade. My mom and dad had me in Christian school. And I remember being terrified of the public school mm -hmm. system. And I remember thinking to myself, oh my gosh, I'm either gonna get shot or you know, like <laughs> killed or, or something of that nature. Now, granted, I lived in a much bigger community <laughs> at the time, but still there was that stigma of this public school system being non-caring, um, that there was a void between the students and the teachers, and um, you know, like that even for those that want to have a religious influence, um, that it's not a big no-no. You know, like there's still that freedom, but yet you don't get your hand slapped for saying, Jesus, um, and, and to me, like that matters to me, big Absolutely. time. And um, I know I've talked fluently about our school district and how much I love them and how incredibly blessed we are by this school district. Um, so I'm anxious to hear how your perception changed from wanting your children to go to a, a private school to embracing our school district. Right. Um, so I didn't have a, ch a school age child when we moved here, mm -hmm. um, just preschool. So when my daughter was ready for kindergarten, Alexa, who's in fifth grade now, mm -hmm. um, of course I was really nervous about mm -hmm. it for many reasons, um, but I sent her there and immediately her teacher was so warm and caring mm -hmm. and loving and um, immediately put me at ease with any of that. Um, and throughout the years, I have a fifth grader, a third grader and a first grader. and I, I don't think we've ever had a teacher that wasn't uh -huh. so caring and loving with the kids. Um, you know, stern when they need to be, but you can yeah, tell they exactly. really care about the kids. Yeah. Um, and I'm just so proud of our schools. I think they have the best atmosphere. Um, I've only had experience with the elementary schools, but I'm sure they're all the same. Mm -hmm. uh, our, I was part of Lincoln becoming the mm -hmm. National School of Character. I think it was in 2016 yeah. they got that yes. award. Um, which was really great because I love that the schools not only meet the kids' academic needs, but they focus on teaching leadership and teaching character, uh, morals. They learn the seven habits, and, um, and your kids will tell you about it at home yeah. to be proactive and have a win-win attitude. And so I love that they're not just developing academics, they're developing people to be successful human beings yes and caring human beings and it's so. not a, a one dimension of just academics right it's multi-dimensional with morals and character and integrity and all of those things responsibility um even though i've teased mr hoffman endlessly that <laughs> spencer is still not responsible like i hope that he <laughs> would be but um i'm so excited to hear your thoughts on the school and i'm so pleased that um you love it as much as i do because i know that you do we're going to take a few second break, and when we come back, I want to hear uh, about what you're working on now. Okay. All right. Around here, we believe in local values like hard work, family time, or a fair price on reliable internet from a local company. That's why Eagle Communications delivers great local values, like a range of internet options to fit your family's needs. Fast and consistent enough to power everyone's devices at once. All at reasonable prices we're proud to offer our friends and neighbors. Ready for better internet? Give us a call or visit eaglecom.net and discover our local values today. Hello again, we're back here with Tracy. 
So one of the things that um, I noticed that you said before was that when you moved here, um, you decided on your own to become involved. Yes. And when I think about you, I think about volunteer extraordinaire because I know that you give your heart and soul to so many things in the community, not only to your children, um, but you do give your heart and soul to the community. And I am glad that you said that you decided on your own to get involved because there is a need for people to be like that. Everything needs help um, as far as it's not a one-man show. We all need help. Right. Um, so tell me a little bit about the communities or the, the projects that you contribute to, the things that you're involved with, the things that you volunteer for, because I know you, you, okay. you do quite a bit. Okay. Um, first, the schools. I spend mm -hmm. a lot of time up at the schools. Um, I Every year I offer to volunteer to help the teachers. Mm -hmm. And so this year I've been going every week to read with first graders. Aww. And it's so fun. I love it. Yeah. That's so nice. Um, so I do that, but I'm also part of the PEP, which okay. is the Parents parents Educator Partners. So it's like the PTO program okay. um, at both Lincoln and Garfield. Um, and we do things like at Garfield, we put on the carnival yes. fundraise for things. Um, we just gave money to um, the it was a student-led project to get new playground equipment at Garfield, and cool. we funded that. Excellent. Um, so things like that that I help out with at the schools and whatever else they help for because um, I just think our teachers are amazing. Mm -hmm. And I agree I couldn't with you. Do it, and so I want to give them whatever help mm -hmm. they need. Um, also, the library. We I grew up going to the library all the time and took my kids there when they were little, and so I'm a part of the Friends of the Library. Okay on the board this year i'm the president and mm -hmm. we do fundraising we do a cookie sale at christmas time yes. um, and we help with things like summer reading program mm -hmm. if they need some expenses for that a couple years ago we bought a children's computer for the library just different needs that aren't in the library's budget that they might need excellent is what we help with there um CCABA is the Clay County Amateur Baseball Association. Okay. And my son plays gonna travel see, uh -huh, baseball, baseball, and this year both of them are going to uh -huh. play, so that ought to be fun. And my husband coaches, Scott coaches. Very good. Um, so I, I'm on the board for that last year and this year and try to help out. I love that our kids have so many opportunities to do so many different things, yeah. different sports, archery, uh, dance, baton twirling is what my daughter does. Um, so I try to help with, with any of those, any of those things so that our kids can continue to have opportunities to go out and do different things like other kids do. Never um, once do I ever think that our kids here are without. Right. I agree. There's always something they can get involved with. When I look at my kids, like, I think that they're thriving. Not just, you know, I use the word a lot um, with the school when I'm talking about the, the school district. But my kids are going past just surviving and learning. It's that they're thriving. Um, my daughter, Jay, she's now a three-instrument girl. She started out on a flute, and she has a band teacher that has encouraged her. Mm -hmm. She's now picked up the ukulele and the piccolo. Um, <laughs> and she has the hopes to do so much more. And, you know, I think about your daughter with um, her twirling and, you know, her pride. I see the photos that you share of the places that they get to go. Yeah. Who and would have thought compete. four girls from a little small town would get to go to nationals in Wisconsin, you know? Just exactly. So opportunities. Yeah. And then, you know, both the boys getting to travel um, with the baseball association. And if you, if you haven't traveled with a baseball team, they go to some incredible venues um, and again that's just an opportunity that so we can still have those big opportunities that maybe the larger communities offer um, mm -hmm. but then we get to come home to a small Nick community Absolutely. and know that we belong to something that's much bigger and greater than what we are so yes. um, I think that's one of my favorite things about even the location of Clay Center um, you don't feel isolated, but yet it is a small community. And so, well, I'm thrilled that your family lives here. I'm glad Thank that I you. get to be we a part of your, too. I know. <laughs> I'm glad that I get to be a part of your life. 
and I get to see your kids grow up and be friends with you and Scott and because um, I think you guys do a remarkable job for the community so thank you thanks. we love it yes we like to help out when we can yep well thanks for watching and I will see you next time